Right, I'm here again, my MBP family and friends. Um, how to do, how to do, how to do. It's another brand new day, yes. It is, it is, and we're here. And this time I'm really reaching out to my parents um, as they... As they, 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 they think of how to support their children with their reading. So many children after COVID and the classroom doors reopened. So many children who missed out on in-person learning are so struggling. They're struggling with the reading. They're struggling with the math. They're just struggling. And so this morning I want to give some, just a few little strategies again to help support your children as they read to help them develop um, more strength in reading comprehension. Reading words are just, are just that, calling words. But reading with meaning and reading for fluency is something different because if they are not fluent readers, um, then they cannot understand what it is that they read. And if they don't understand what they read, then when they take their exams, they are failing. They are failing. They are so, so failing. So I'm just going to give a few strategies right now um, as I see the outcome, see the data. Um, they, then then it, it is, you know, we, and we have gotten one teacher, she got a, um, a thing about Read America and the kids get a free book. They could choose a free book. And so I look and I see sometimes they get the book and they're not even reading the books because they come down to the math class and the books are left right there in the math class. So we're giving them books and I'm not sure what it is that we're expecting we give them the books if they don't know what to do. A lot of them because they are struggling with the words that they, they don't know, um, then it's like the book, the, 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 the stories are not effective. They don't mean much. They don't, they're not exciting. And so let us remember that handing a child a book and say, go read it, is a totally different thing than to support the child in reading so they can understand what they're reading. So please like the videos, guys. Let Share the videos. Thanks to all of you who have been sharing a video or two or more. I so truly appreciate your support. Thanks to those of you who have become members. And... Um, it, it's a good thing, guys, when people are, we're trying, we're trying. We, there's no perfection. We're not professional. Um, we're not professionals at this. <laughs> we, 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 we have ideas. We want to share the ideas. And we appreciate those of you who are appreciating what we do. As I said again on my channel, it's not a one thing one size fits all channel. It is a it is a one stop all, one stop shop. It means that you get a lot of different things there. So I'm not focusing on one topic and trying to find content just to fit that one topic every week, every day. Um I'm mostly I'm trying to make sure that I can uplift a spirit or two or more. I'm trying to remind you that it's okay. We are here. The struggles are real. The struggles are not just meant for one, for you. It's meant for all of us. We all go through our different struggles. Yours might be a little different, but we all go through them. As long as we're human beings, we have a heart that beats. We have feet that get that gets that feet that get weary. Hands that get tired. <laughs> we have two eyes that. We see and we, it gets tired too. They get tired. We have ears that hear. We have mouths. And when we are hungry, we need to eat in order to, to quench that hunger. And when we're thirsty, we have to drink 
in order to quench that thirst. So we have all that, all right? We have a beating heart. We have lungs that suck in air and let out air. Um, so we are all in the same category and we face similar things. And so I say to us, don't ever think you're ever alone. Don't ever think you're alone. Reach out, speak to someone when things are not going so well because they might be going through similar situations and together you can come up with you can come up with solutions that make sense. So never struggle alone. Reach out and find someone who will listen. So with that said, here are a few things that I want to remind parents. And parents, remember when kids come home, one of the best things that you can do for your child is to have conversations. What did you do in school today? How was your day in school to, you know, talk to them. Let them know you are interested. If they know you're interested, they are going to make sure that they have something to come home to talk to you about. If they are struggling with the work, they might not say to the teacher, but they will say to you, reach out to the teacher. Teachers do not know everything. Teachers, again, remember, we have 20 kids in a classroom. Please do not sit and expect teachers to make 20 phone calls on a daily basis. If you're talking to your children and they have concerns, you reach out to that teacher. Send an email, send a text, send a note with the child. And so that we can help your child the best way we can do that. Um, the kids are growing up, yes, they're changing, but remind them also that as they change, the changes are not just about them, that all children, their ages or in that age range, do go through changes as well. And so it shouldn't become a distraction or become a, a, a reason for not doing the right things, but to know that you're not alone. So let's just get it together. Society is not there waiting for children to, 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 to appreciate excuses. They're not. As they get older, society is expecting them to perform, to give back, to be responsible, right? And so we have to teach them those skills so that they can be better young human beings. So some of the things... Um, when you choose books, make sure, I know a lot of kids choose their own books, but you can take a moment to look at the title of the book and make sure that, they, you know, make sure, encourage a kid to choose books that they are going, that, um, that, that would be fun. We don't know what's between the pages. Sometimes the pictures don't tell exactly what's in the, the book and we always go back, don't judge the book by the cover, don't just look at the cover, but look at the, 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 the type font, look at the size of them. A lot of times, if it's too small, depending on what age group the child is in, then you're going to have a turn off. If there are too many words, children get they become intimidated. So make sure that at their age level, they're choosing books. Judy Bloom is a good series, good, fun stories that children 8, 10, 11 can relate to. They have many, um, many, um, we have the Nancy Drew Mystery Stories, very, very good books. I read those books when I was 9, 8, 9, 10. I was reading those series, um, The Hardy Boys. They're mystery books, but they, they, they it, it's good reading. Um, have the children to, to graduate into history. It's always about history, where we were and, and how we have come to this point. Help them to, to, to choose those books that you can have good discussions about. And you also educate yourselves on what they're reading. Read with them. So if it's something to learn, then you're learning it together. And if it's something you have experience about, you can also offer experience to them. Do not sit at home and 
pick up um, just slangs or or terms that the kids will bring into school and 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 it become a distraction because a lot of kids if you say the word black or refer to a black person it is so taboo because of what we're not educating our kids they're just listening to a little piece of anger and then they come into school and and they're they're, they're trying to argue it they don't want to hear the real deal or or to understand that these are not things that you should become angry about but that you can understand that if, if somebody if you if I'm a fat woman and they call me fat I cannot be offended because I am fat so when people say things about what they see not not things that are made up or or or, or gossips but they they see it when they say it stop telling the kids that it is wrong and they sh and and people shouldn't be calling you shouldn't be referring to you as this or that teach the kids to embrace who they are to love who they are for who they are and stop making them feel like they're inferior so those are things that if we're reading with our children and we're explaining things <clears throat> in a positive way to them. So when they come out to have conversations, they will be wholesome. They, they, there will be wholesome conversations. Um, as I said, when they read, let them talk to you about it. Don't let them read and you don't know if they're reading or they're not reading. If you're reading, they will like to read. If you don't own a book in the house, if you're not buying a newspaper, if you're not engaged in reading, your children will not like reading. Kids come out and they live what they what they learn. So if at home you're not embracing schoolwork, the kids come out with the same attitude. They leave school, they don't want to do work. They come home, you don't ask them, you don't engage them into good conversations. Some of them, they don't see you. They leave out in the mornings. They don't see you to even hear the words. Make it a good day by choice, my child. Listen to your teachers. Don't tell your kid, be good, because some kids don't know what be good is. So tell them what you want them to do. Be respectful. Listen and follow directions when they come in and get their work done. Ask for support if they need it. That's one of the biggest things that... that uh, that is left out. Kids not asking for support. You're teaching and everybody's quiet. And when you ask, do you understand? They might not answer. They might give a thumbs up. But for the most part, they don't. And they're not saying to you, could you go for that again? Could we do one more problem like that again? You know, nothing. And so please encourage them to participate, to let their voices be heard. Ask for support, you know. Ask to go over something if they don't understand. But don't sit quietly. And the only time you hear them is to be disruptive or to be mean-spirited to someone. So read together. Choose fun books. Um, sometimes make a date, a reading date. You know, guys, Monday night is our time. Or Sunday evening after dinner, we're all going to read together. Make sure you get your best book. So we can all read and we can have good discussions. Teach your kids to act out things, right? If you don't know what the future holds, we don't know who the next doctor is going to be, who the next actor or actress is going to be. So teach them to, when they read, act it out if they can. Put some feelings into what they read and bring it to life. These little, little things, as we say, they live what they learn, might take them to become the next award winner. So please remember, um, another thing that they should do is for you to do with them is to help them with their phonic skills. Big words should not scare the children because big words are made up of smaller word parts. So teach them to break down the words when they're reading so that they're not jumping over words because once you leave things out of the text 
authors write and when they write to us they write a certain way for us to get what they got out of what they wrote they use punctuation marks and we cannot just read and just run run without putting in those punctuations that the author um, puts there. We have to observe them, acknowledge them, and, and read accordingly. So if we teach them how to break down words, um, when they get to a word, that word might have a good, is, 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 it's necessary in that text. If they're jumping over it, then they lose the meaning of what they read. And so now they read and it doesn't make sense and they do not develop that love for reading. But teach them how to break them down. Teach them how to read with a highlighter so when they get the stuff that they don't understand, they don't know the meaning of the word, teach them how to read on because usually the meaning for that word is in the context after. Sometimes... Authors will write the definition of the word and then write the word. So sometimes the meaning comes before or after. So teach them how to use context clues, clues in the text they're reading in order to determine the meaning of words that they don't know. Phonics is necessary to sound out things and put it together. Sometimes when they sound it out, it might not be perfect, but believe me, when they do that, something might click and say, oh, I've heard that word before, and it will come together for them. Um, let them use a connection to themselves. Has this ever happened to me as I read the story? Connection to the world. Have I watched a video before that this same scenario was played out, right? So as they read, guys, let them learn to make the connection. Let them bring in their background knowledge into what they're reading. What a time when this happened, I remember when. And so I could understand, I could understand what this character is going through, right? So these are little things that if we bring them in, then the children can develop a better sense of understanding what they read. So let them not read in isolation, but let them read and make them make sense of what they're reading because that will develop a love for reading and we will get better outcome. When your children read, give them a moment to write about what they read. Always, always, reading and writing are buddies. They go together. Always encourage them to write a little bit about what was read. Let them talk about the characters in the story. What are some of the traits they have? What are some of the qualities they have? So to talk about character traits, tell them that all they're saying is how the person behave or treat other people. Who is a, who, how would you describe the person? Those are the things we call the traits or we call, you know, um, the qualities of a person, right? So were they kind? Were they mean-spirited? Were they hardworking? What are some things you know about the character? Right? So all those little things will build a better love for reading. And if they can read and understand what they read, they will do well on their assessments. If they can understand what they read, they will also bring those skills into math. Math today, to, to, to apply what they learn, when they learn the process, um, it helps them if they can read because in order to get to the process in math, you have to read the story that is written around the math. And so, if you're doing something to say, Jill and her friend went to a restaurant, they had whatever, whatever, whatever they had for dinner, and um, if the dinner came to $33 and they left a 2% tip for the, for the server, how much did they leave for the tip? Or how much did they spend in all for dinner? Then 
if they can can when stories like that come up in math if they can read and understand what is read they would be able to do the math so let us encourage them for reading guys let us bring those qualities back you're going on a trip with them let them read a book they don't have to be hard books let them start out reading easy books until they can graduate up to harder books don't think because they're in the sixth grade or the fifth grade that they have to be reading these big chapter books. No, let them go back and read and understand, use their phonic skills, talk about what they've read, and let them graduate to the level they need to graduate to. It's better for them to start out small. You're cooking, give them the box with the cereal, let them tell you what is in the cereal. Right? Break down the words for them and teach them this, you know, put them together, you're going to get. And so if you're building those skills and helping us to build those skills at home, believe me, when they come to school, they will want to participate because they feel more confident. A lot of kids, they don't want to participate. They'll walk out, they will disrupt because they don't want to be called on because they can't read, they can't write, they can't do it, they can add and subtract, multiply or divide. When you come home, it was funny, not funny, it was sad. Um, we're talking about quarters and nickels and dimes and, and kids didn't know their values. They didn't know that 25 cents is a quarter or 10 cents is a dime or a nickel has five cents in it, right? So you come home with your wallet or your purse, throw out the change on the counter and help the children understand what it is. You might give them a dollar and say, go get a dollar me a meal from the dollar menu at McDonald's. But that's a paper dollar. They need to know that within that paper dollar, there are smaller pieces that make it to be that one whole amount. So people, we can be teachers at home. We can be the best teachers we can be at home for our children. Because the, the environment, you're cooking, you're driving, you're doing all these things. And if you're talking to the kids, you know, we're driving and we're getting to grandma's um, and I'm going it, it, 60 miles an hour. Um, we're getting to grandma. Grandma is so many, whatever away. How many, how much time is it gonna take us to get to grandma, right? If, if we, we break down our everyday, all right, we're going in, we're going to buy, two items and, and this one costs this, this one costs that. How much am I going to spend? Because they come to school, they're going to be exposed. When I do math, I always say money. I always um, use money to, to support the learning. You have $150 and you spent $45. How much do you have left? Right? You started out with X amount. So we're doing algebra now, we're doing um, equations, and, and so we have to find the, the value of X or Y or Z or W or T or whichever letter, but the unknown amount. But if I left the house, I didn't check how much money was in my pocket. And I spent 250 for that and 250 and, and, and 80 for that. How much did I left, leave the house with? How much did I leave the house with? So we can find the value of X, the unknown amount of what I left the house with. If we, if the kids understand from your shopping with them. All right, I'm, I have 20 bucks. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. How much did this cost? $3.99. How much does this cost? $7.99. How much change will I get back from 20? You have the tools to teach the kids to help them. Don't wait for them to come to school when we have to teach a curriculum that is pre, right? It, it is made already. So we cannot look to see this or that. We have to now teach a curriculum. And so all the, the steps that they took from kindergarten up, where they learn numbers and learn letters and learn sounds, and then they come and they have to start adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing them. And they come when they have to read a problem and understand it. And then they get to the sixth grade when 
all of those things that they were exposed to, if they had built on it and you had helped them to build, then when they get to sixth grade, they would have that foundation. But when they get to sixth grade and they're stuck at second grade learning, then, you know, it's a big, big problem when they get to the upper grades. So let's help them, people. Let's help them. Let's help them because we are able to. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how much a lot of you are looking at. Oh, I don't understand the work at sixth grade. You didn't have to understand sixth grade work because if you had helped them build the basic skills, you wouldn't have to worry about sixth grade because they would have been ready for sixth grade. So it's not about what, you know, if you just build on the basics, four pillars, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Those are the four things that they need to know and understand because everything else is built on them. Those are the four pillars. And if they know how to do with them, then when they come, and, and if you're helping them to read and, and they're building their reading skills and understanding, reading comprehension is the key. If they're understanding, not just reading words and can connect anything, but understanding what they read, then putting it together, you're going to have an A student. So this is just my two bits, people, and this is for you parents and for whoever needs it, grandparents, whoever, big brothers, big sisters, just help the young ones to build the foundations needed so they can be successful. We don't want too many of them. There's enough. COVID took a lot, but it didn't have to. It didn't have to. When kids came online to learn, they didn't. there was no one there encouraging them. The kids who were being encouraged, um, you see the difference when now that the doors have been reopened. You see the huge difference. The kids who had no support, they were just there in the bed by themselves. They might log into the class, but never see them, never hear from them. They didn't do one bit of work. You post the lessons and nothing gets done. It's the same few kids that come now into back into the open doors and are able to cont cont continue their learning. But all of those who shut it out, who never even, we, we use the whiteboard, we use all sort of different things to support them. And then we were on Zoom, available for tutoring. No show. So if we don't support, the home is the first place for learning. And if we're not making the effort, guys, if we're not doing our part, then believe me, when they come to school, it's hard. It is very hard. Okay, you could teach it till you're blue. If when they walk out, there's no reinforcement. They come back the next day forgetting everything. So please support your teachers. That's how we, that's the biggest support you can give to your teachers by supporting your child or your children at home.